Hi there, my most amazing artist, Miss Pelavon here to show you how to create either a Mexican folk art sun or a Talavera lizard to add to your Mexican serape. The Mexican suns were believed to be um, representing life, um, light, and flourishing nature and positivity. The opposite side of that would be the moon, which would represent um, death darkness and negativity. So when you're making your Mexican sun today, you can choose to do the sun face or you can choose to do the balance of the moon and the sun like the ones pictured at the bottom. Your other choice is to create a Talavera lizard and they were just used to decorate houses in Mexico. They were ceramic which means they were created out of clay and they were usually um, decorated with bright colors and patterns. So you're going to choose either to do the Mexican sun or the Talavera lizards. Both come from Mexico so that's why I chose those as options but you get to pick which one you'd like to work with. So first I'm going to show you how to draw the Mexican sun. So I'm going to move the lizards aside and we'll go back to that. So the Mexican sun you're going to choose which one you like best. We're going to start with the circle and you're going to notice that around the circle there's always these rays coming off of the sides and there's different ways you can draw them. Kind of looks like a flower but we're going to add a face onto the middle and you're going to try to use warm colors if you can to make it look more like a sun. In the bottom two you will see that the moon and the sun are balanced to create kind of a balance between life and death positive and negative day and night. So you decide if you want to do the full sun or if you want to do the half moon and half sun. I'm just going to do a sun to show you the process of how to create it and then you will decide. So first you're going to start with a circle. Remember you can always trace a circle if you want to. I'm just using a black crayon to draw and then I'll use the oil pastels to color in. Then I'm going to create some rays and your rays can be pointy, they can be rounded, but they cannot go off the paper so you kind of have to plan. And I want to make sure I have enough space so none of my rays look skinny because I don't want to have one skinny ray and the rest the same size. And then you can even do like a second set off of the main set in between that space if you choose to. Now all of these suns have a face on them so you're going to add a face to your sun using some facial features like big eyes because remember the sun is full of life. And it can kind of be cartoony because the sun doesn't really have a face. This is the one time that you are allowed to make your sun a face. So then I have the nose here and you can decide how to do your nose. And then I see eyebrows on most of them. See how they all have eyebrows in some way or another. Some of them are big. I think actually I'm going to make mine a little bit larger so I can color them in. And then I'm going to make the mouth and the mouth looks pretty big too so I want to make sure that it's large. like that. So when you're working you want to try and focus on making that big circle big enough for the face, having enough space for those rays and not going off the paper. You're going to color this with oil pastels when you're finished. So that's your first option. Your second option is to do the Talavera lizard. So I'm going to show you how to make that drawing right now. Um, we're going to start with the head and body shape and make sure that we leave enough room for the tail. So when I do the head, I'm just going to do a U and then make it kind of rounded at the top. And then I'm going to make the body, which is bigger and kind of elongated. See how the body is long? It looks like a long oval. And then the arms kind of look like these little L shapes coming off the side. And then it has four little fingers coming off of that. So I'm just going to do four little bumps. That one's close to the edge of my paper, so I have to kind of be careful. But I want to make my lizard big so that I can cut him out. I want to use this paper well. Now, for the back end, I'm going to do the tail first so I have enough space for it, and then I'll go back and do the legs so that I can position them. So the tail comes off of the body. It's kind of pointy, and then it goes back to the body. Kind of similar to that. And then if you're using your pencil, you can erase that. If you're using a crayon, you can't, but you could incorporate that into your patterns and designs that you would have on your lizard. You can see over here there's a line right here that divides the lizard's body into sections and then they decorated it like that. So you can do that as well. For the back side of the lizard, for the legs, he has some 
legs that are going the opposite direction and then four bumps off of that. So this part over here I have to be careful because I don't have a lot of space. I want to make sure I plan enough space for my lizard. Just like that and then you will continue to um, make your lizard's eye. I see one eye on all of these lizards. You can see only a side of their face. And then a lizard's eye, they have kind of a elongated pupil like that. And then you can add a smile. And then you can go on to decorate the body. So you can put flowers on it. I notice a lot of flowers. Um, I notice a lot of patterns. So you can decide how you want to decorate your lizard. It could just be something as simple as the flowers here on this one. So I'm just going to make some flowers on my lizard. And I notice some of the flowers are going off the side of my lizard too, so I can do like half a flower here. Kind of matches the shape of his toes in my opinion. And then some smaller flowers to fill up some space. And then this will be colored with oil pastels as well. And you want to try to use bright colors because they were traditionally very, very bright. So you can go ahead and get started. Remember you have to choose to do one. You cannot do both. So your choice is either a sun or the lizard, and you're going to draw them and then color them with oil pastels. This will then be cut out and glued onto your Mexican serape. I'll show you the example before you get started today in class.